I don't know about you, but there were some jaw-dropping moments as I was reading through this transcript. And what really stuck out to me, I've got to read this, uh, these words again, quote, this is from Trump talking to Turnbull. I spoke to Putin, Merkel, Abe of Japan, to France today, and this was my most unpleasant call. And then towards the end of the call, President Trump says, I have had it. I have been making these calls all day, and this is the most unpleasant call all day. Putin was a pleasant call. This is ridiculous. And then President Trump ends that phone call soon after. Uh, this is just extraordinary to think that, you know, President Trump talking to a very close ally like Australia. I know you have been on many calls like this with the U.S. president as prime minister. Is this normal? Uh, not really normal, I've got to say. It's, uh, it's right out there. Uh, but frankly, I think we know that this was a testy telephone conversation, and frankly, now we've got the evidence of it. I think also, as I read through the, uh, the transcript, uh, we have seen a uh, reflection of what I think is a pretty consistent position on President Trump in terms of his administration's approach to immigration policy. But as Anna Cronin just said to you from Australia a minute ago, I think the real impact for this actually lies with Mr Turnbull in Australia, because mm. whereas President Trump's position was pretty clear for a long time, the content of what Prime Minister Turnbull has said in this exchange is quite remarkable and will be seen as new in Australia. One thing he describes himself as a Prime Minister of Australia who is just a transactional businessman. I mean, that'll go down like a lead balloon back home. To yeah. Secondly, then to say, hey, look, we just want to be seen to be doing a deal with you guys. You don't actually have to take any of these asylum seekers or refugees. And then as part of the swap, I think what most Australians will find new news uh, is, uh, again, what Anna has just referred to, namely, Mr Turnbull says, we'll take anybody that you want to send to us. So on these three counts, I think Mr Turnbull now faces, through this extraordinary leak from the United States, a very large-scale domestic political problem concerning his own credibility mm -hmm. and his tenuous hold on the Conservative Party so, leadership in Australia. So what do you think the political fallout might be for Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, especially when you have... Uh, you know, people saying that this is an, a really embarrassing moment for Turnbull when he talked about, you know, this is not a refugee swap to the public, yet you look at these transcripts and it indeed is. Look, I mean, first thing is that uh, this should never have happened in the sense that diplomatic communications and diplomatic records of conversations between heads of government should never be leaked. In my case, they end up getting leaked by WikiLeaks, but for it to come from somewhere within the administration is just jaw-dropping. But from Prime Minister Turnbull himself, now that it has been leaked, it goes to deep questions concerning his honesty and integrity of his dealings with the Australian people. That's his problem. He's already on shaky ground in Australia. He's seen as transactional in terms of uh, basically abrogating core principles that he once stood for. For this now to come out and him to self-describe himself as just a transactional businessman in his dealings with the US administration, I think is going to place enormous pressure on him in the Liberal Party, his, mm. his political party of which he's head, where he's already under challenge. So I think we, this is going to be the first of a series of very long days for Mr Turnbull. You were just saying that this conversation was not normal. You don't often hear very close allies like Australia and the U.S. talking to each other in this way. Uh, you know, the, Australia has fought in wars with the United States, including Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, you know, they're, they're very close intelligence-sharing partners as part of that arrangement, the Five Eyes. Uh, how much damage, I guess, looking back now, because this conversation happened uh, back in, in January, how much damage do you think this has done, though, to the U.S.-Australian alliance and the perception of it in Australia? I think you've got to see this at two levels. One is um, what the respective governments see. And because the US and Australia have been in the trenches with each other literally for 100 years, in fact, 100 years this year since um, the First World War, uh, the administrations and the governments, left or right, Labor, Liberal, Conserv Republican, Democrat, can handle this sort of thing. My concern, frankly, is in Australia, and in various other allied countries of the United States is the impact of this sort of thing on domestic public opinion. But going to domestic public opinion in Australia again, I think the real unfolding dynamic from this extraordinary conversation is uh, Prime Minister Turnbull having been loose with the truth in his dealings with the Australian people. So I'm sure those who leaked this thought they would be damaging President Trump, but mm. frankly, President Trump's position is well known. This will be new news in Australia.